Hello Factorio people, welcome back to the broadcasts from Space Age. A semi-streamlined playthrough tutorial walkthrough doohickey of Factorio Space Age. Thank you for the support on the first few episodes. Thank you for hitting that like and subscribe button, as I know you all want to do. If you could do it again, then that would, that would be good, I suppose. Don't have to, of course. Just do, do what you like. Right, that's enough waffling. Let's jump straight into it, shall we? This was the state of the base, where we left it. Got the plan for iron, copper, some steel. Space for some green circuits. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to get red and green science in. Now, red and green science is simple enough. Oh god, I pressed all the wrong buttons on literally every single one of my windows. Okay. <laughs> um, red and green science is simple enough. It needs a copper plate. A uh, red science needs a copper plate and an iron gear wheel. And a logistic science pack needs a transport belt and an inserter. But a transport belt needs. Iron and a gear wheel. And an inserter needs iron and a gear wheel and a circuit. So I always like to do it like this. I make some red signs by hand, or and then do the basic automation in the book. In the jump start base. And then I kinda just ignore it until I get this far. And then I build red and green signs together. Your red science takes uh, five seconds to make one, and your green science takes six seconds to make one. So a good baseline ratio to just get you going is five of these, six of these. And this will give you one of each per second if your machine's crafting speed was one. But it's not, as we all know, it's not. The assembly machine Mark 1 have a crafting speed of 0 0.5. So this will only give you 30 science per minute in the early game, but that's more than enough. When you look at the cost of these technologies, 100, 120, 200, you know, this is more than enough to just keep things ticking over. So I like to do it roughly like this, and then uh, this just, the red just needs copper plates, and we need to make some iron gear wheels, and then we can also use iron gear wheels to make the inserters and the belts. So here my blueprint book. Uh, I will update this in as soon as I upload this upload this episode to YouTube. So check out the description for the link to the updated blueprint book. I've got my red and green science blueprint here. So let me slap it in, tie up all the belts so that you can see what's going on. Here it is. So I do one iron gear wheel assembler here for the exclusively for the red signs. But I only bring in half a belt of iron or uh, of iron plates. And I just use do it like this to feed this is in this is in this is in here. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, it is in there. Um one iron gear wheel machine will not keep up with one uh conveyor belt machine, transport belt machine. If you look over on the right hand side. With the mouse overs, we we now have two iron or two iron plates makes one gear wheel a second, sort of telling us Dyson Sphere program style. This will make one iron gear wheel a second, but this will use one iron gear wheel a second. That's fine. Uh, this will make one iron gear wheel a second. This will use one iron gear wheel a second. So yeah, they will actually keep up. I was completely wrong. I don't know why I thought they wouldn't keep up. Um, but the point is, it doesn't matter because. This makes two belts a second, this makes one inserter a second, but you don't need anywhere near that much to saturate this belt here. And you can see here I'm doing the old side loading trick. There's various different ways to do this. 
so if your belts belts are uh, they're, they're they're smart up to a point and then they're and then they're pretty uh, binary if a belt hits an end of a belt it ties it together and there's not really any way to stop it from doing that and there's not really any reason why you would want to <laughs> I guess so that's what this belt here is doing. This belt here is forcing this to become a T-junction. So that, without this here, this would become this, but with this here. And then this gives us the uh, the old side-loading trick that we talked about last time. Where your stuff comes up the belt and then it will land on this lane and it will just go forwards on this lane. And then because uh, inserters always output to the far side of a belt. That ensures that this side loading here is, is on the inside and then the inserters go on the outside and then that's how we get that done. As, as I say, there's various different ways to do it. You could use like a long-handed inserter on this one and do it the opposite way around. So like a long-handed inserter onto this like that. I mean, that might arguably be neater, to be honest with you. But of course, you've got the problem with the long-handed inserters that they're a lot slower. Their rotation speed is half of that of a fast inserter. But, you know, each to their own. Each to their own. So this is ploughing along nicely. And then, as a rule, I don't, I don't really know. Like, there's absolutely no way. Nobody knows. There's no way to know how much how many labs you need to consume this science. Don't don't quote wikis at me, don't tell me in numbers, just nobody knows, basically. Nobody knows. So I usually just put 18 down. 18 seems to do me okay. In the early game it's weird because all of your researches take an arbitrary amount of time. Up here, 15 seconds, 40 packs, 15 seconds. But the like the next one along, 30 seconds, 30, 15, 15, 30, 30. There are some 45s somewhere down the line. 10. That one's 10 for some reason. There are some 45s. I bel Believe me, there are. Come on, I would know. That one's a minute. That's the first one that's a minute. Come on. There we go go. Energy, electric energy distribution too, for some reason, is 45 seconds. So it's actually really difficult to know how many labs you need to consume the amount of science that you're making. And then also you get these uh, lab research speed things, which do lab research speed plus to a super lab. Oh, it's because I've got editor extensions on. That's what, that's what that is. That's not in the game. Ignore that. And then you've got lab research speed, which doesn't do anything really but just lower the number of labs that process the same amount of science. It's all very squiffy. Sorry I'm having a drink while I'm recording. That's because I'm really good at YouTube. Okay. And i uh, been lucky enough up to this point to sort of get by with the stuff that we had from the original Jumpstart base and handcrafting splitters and undergrounds. As long as you've got a stockpile of transport belts, you can make undergrounds with more iron plates and you can make splitters with iron plates and electronic circuits. But we get to the point now where that's not really going to survive in the long term. So we need to start thinking about a mall or a hub or just some place to get stuff that we want. And the best way to think about the mall, the hub, is to think about the things that you want in decent quantities all of the time. So that's transport belts, it's underground belts, it's splitters, it's inserters, it's power poles. Really. It's this logistics tab. Plus, possibly, you know, assembly machines. You can go really deep into the into the mall, you know? You can put offshore pumps on there, steam engines, boilers. 
it's not for me. It's not the way I like to do it. The way I like to do it is to just have some key items and then handcraft everything else. If you're doing like the uh, lazy run where you're not allowed to handcraft any more than X amount of items, then of course you need to think of a plan for that. But, you know, chests, arguably you could put chests in them all. You want simple stuff. And it also helps to keep it simple so that you don't have to worry about putting too many things in them all. Uh, and the way I like to do it is I like to run... Whoops. Good lord. I like to run one belt of iron across the bottom. I really regret going this way as well, by the way. Like, I really regret going north towards these trees, and I know for a fact that this is a big lake. I wish I'd have gone this way, or even this way, really. I went this way because it was near the coal and the iron, and I thought I'd just slot these into the bus as, as and when needed, but I actually really regret going north, so... Um, one belt of iron across the bottom. I've done that slightly wrong. Imagine this would had more space. Uh, and then another belt of iron across the top, like this. Because iron is by far and away the thing you need the most in a mall. Iron and iron gear wheels. So I like to have the iron go into two places. And then I like to do a shared belt here of uh, copper and... Uh, I'll side load some iron gear wheels onto one side of this and then I'll use the other one for electronic circuits and steel. And that is basically those four ingredients, these four ingredients, will get you... Let me get rid of this flashing for you. Uh, will get you quite a lot of very simple basic stuff. And everything else you can just sort of get away with handcrafting. Like, I don't see the point of putting radars in them all. Like, you don't need that many radars and they're so quick to make. They're so easy to make just by hoovering up. Like, you can hold F as you're walking around and you will just hoover up things on belts. You know? Turrets, maybe, if you were playing with the biters on properly. But again, turrets are just iron, copper, iron gear wheels. So again, I have a blueprint for that. So it's mall phase one. There's an extra mall phase two bit on the end. We'll get across that bridge when we come to it. Uh, it looks like this. Let me plop it down. Uh, there are... Uh, limiters on the chests to stop too many things from going in. There is an exception here. Let me fast forward slightly just so you don't have to see all of this stupid flashing no electronic power thing because it's irritating. Okay. Uh, I've put some lights in. The lights aren't in the blueprint. But I put some lights in because the game insists on always being dark whenever I want to talk. So, here, here it is. Here it is. Um, four assembly machines making iron gear wheels. Just because iron gear wheels go into an awful lot. And... Uh, again, some more side loading here just to make sure that we've got that done. And then some steel and some green circuits. Don't actually use many uh, much steel or green circuits currently, but there is an extension to the mall that will be very useful. And then uh, assembly machine twos. Yes, so as I was saying, some of these chests have limiters on, right, to stop things from automatically placing into boxes. So this will stop. So this inserter will work. Why, why have you... Oh, you've got no iron, that's why, because the iron is running out. But if you do this, then this inserter can't input into here, and so will not make any more than this. You can also use the circuit network to do this. You can attach a wire to an inserter and give it a condition that says don't work if there are 
or the way I do it, is only work when there are less than 50 assembly machines in here. And the reason I've done this specifically for assembly machines is just for my own quality of life, really, so that in future when I like upgrade these and I want to dump these assembly machines in here, I can just control click to put them in. Because control click to put items in won't overflow. I'm clicking, I'm clicking, it won't overflow into this. You can just pick them up and do this and that will achieve the same thing, of course. Um, but it's more relevant with this because you need an assembly machine mark 1 to make an assembly machine mark 2 so you really do want to put them down basically when you've finished with them when you start upgrading to assembly machine mark 2's you just get rid of the assembly machine mark 1's so eventually you know and then you want to prioritize using those rather than making new ones So if you upgrade a hundred assembly machines, for example, you can let this just stop working by using the circuit network. And there'll be more. There'll be more things to do with the circuit network as we go forward, but that is the basic use case for it. Really, it's just to attach and insert it to a chest and say only work when the chest has less than X amount in it, or only work when it has, yeah. So this is the basic mall. This will just this will get you everything that you really can't be bothered making by hand all of the time. Belts, inserters, assembly machines, fur uh, furnaces, miners. A mall doesn't need to work at ratio. Like, if you added up the total number of iron gear wheels that all of this needs, it's more than four machines. But the idea is not that it works as fast as possible all of the time is that it just works steadily and certain things fill up and then stop being built and then when you need them you grab them and then it makes some more so like a hundred inserters here a hundred inserters a hundred inserters if I suddenly run out of yellow inserters I come and take them and it fills these up relatively quickly not as quick as possible but relatively quickly but as you can see, this has caused a, dra a huge drain on the iron because we didn't actually fully finish doing the iron stacks. And we also only put in barely one and a half belts of iron ore coming out. So that's why the miners are on here. So we can expand the iron, can bring the second iron belt in as well. Uh, and I also realised that I probably want two belts for green circuits, so I just nudge the steel over slightly, just so that I've got room for that going forward, just because obviously it's a lot easier to change it now. Uh, and then, I don't know, I don't know if I need to really talk about how I split items off on the bus here, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, I am the kind of guy who doesn't like to... I know I could like save undergrounds, but I, I like the way that you can see it leaving the bus like this. Like I know I could save undergrounds by like doing... Actually I can't in that exact scenario because these have to go under this anyway. Um, I, ju I just like the way that that looks, personally. Uh, obviously it gets a bit more expensive when you start using higher tiers of uh, undergrounds because those become quite expensive quite quickly, but it's fine. It's a price we're willing to pay here for aesthetics. Hopefully. Hopefully. Alright, let me do the uh, laborious and uninteresting task of expanding all of the mining and the furnace stacks. Okay, easy enough. Night time, of course, obviously. So a few, uh, a few extra belts of iron. I could have put the last one in, I suppose. That's just pure laziness on my part. <laughs> um, and that has, of course, mean, meant that we need some more power. So I'm not going to go over the, the, the whole furnace ratio thing again, because I, I spoke about that last time. But this will be more power. 
that should last us a decent amount of time. In theory, it should last us a decent amount of time. 36 megawatts, I believe that is. Yeah, that's okay. So everything is uh, looking good, really. And we're just sort of plowing our way through these researches until we get to uh, the next milestone for researches is when we need to start processing oil. But I also wanted to get military science set up. Now, I know I'm playing on peaceful. I'm playing with pollution off as well, just to minimize UPS drain when we get into mega base territory. And so I don't have to use the command line to remove the pollution. Because if I use the command line, if I go into the. If I, if I try and use a command. Uh, if I can tell the difference between a forward and a backslash. Using the map editor will disable achievements. Please repeat the command to proceed. Or any. any command like that you know you can turn the pollution off at a later date with the command line but if I do that off stream if I even if I do it on stream I can't then prove to you not that I not that it really matters of course but I can't then prove to you that I've not just gone into editor mode and done something off camera to save myself an hour or whatever or to cheat, you know, like to actually legitimately cheat. Like put a two billion iron ore patch here or something just because I, you know. So anyway, I'm, I, I'm playing with the pollution off. I'm playing with the biters on peaceful mode just because I do sometimes like to take my anger out on them. So they may as well continue to exist. And I wanted the demolishers on... Um, I, don't know, I don't know if turning them off gets rid of the demolishers completely from... Vulcanus, which would be, a, 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 that's not fun. I want the demolishers there. They're the only interesting enemy <laughs> that they've managed to design. That's very unfair. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so we do actually want military science, because also military science plays a large role in spaceship design, because the best way to get rid of small and medium asteroids is just with bullets. So weapon shooting speed and project physical projectile damage, you get a, you get a couple of levels with red and green science, but eventually you need military science. So we may as well get military science done. And military science also goes into a lot more in Space Age, I believe. It goes into a lot more useful things further on down the line. Healthy food, healthy body. So yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, actually having a use for military science if you choose to ignore the biters, as I do in this playthrough. Biters aren't for everybody. I don't think you should feel ashamed or like feel like you're playing less of the game of Factorio if you're playing with the biters off. It's a single player game, you know, like play it how you want. Didn't really do a good job of putting that steel in a, in a sensible place, did I? There will be no shaming anybody for playing with the buyers off. Who cares, basically? Alright. Let me fast forward a bit, because I honestly can't remember the next thing I'm supposed to talk about. Military science, I assume, but... Right, okay, There's there was some mild devastation. Um... That's a joke, deliberately juxtaposing the word mild and the word devastation, which implies a certain level of... Anyway. Don't, yeah, explain my jokes. Explain the jokes on the YouTube channel, really good. Go off on a completely ad-libbed tangent, 25 minutes into the Factoria video. Really good. Really, really helpful. Excellent stuff. I crafted some grenades uh, by getting the first level of military done which gives you access to Military 2, which only needs red and green science, which gives you access to grenades, and then you can lob grenades at trees. And it saves you a lot of time. It saves you even more time when you get another level of explosive damage. Obviously, throwing them at the trees and then chopping them down anyway doesn't save any time at all. I also have put in Phase 2 of the mall which is included in the Blueprint book here for your delectation. 
I spent longer than you would think on this. Because I wanted to make the medium and the large power pots. But it's interesting that these have exactly the same requirement. They both need steel plates, iron sticks and copper cables. And I thought, oh, I know what I can do. I can use the new functionality for uh, setting a recipe with the circuit network. And it doesn't really work with belts because when the recipe changes it spits all of this out into uh, an output on this side and the machine will refuse to do anything until that output has been cleared. It won't even change the recipe for you. So I spent a long time playing with it trying to get it to work in a way that I thought would be nice. It, it doesn't it just doesn't really work with belts. It will work fine when we get the logistics network going and we can just have one purple or maybe even green logistics chest that just everything outputs into. But for now, I'm just going to do it with this. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Unfortunately, this isn't the time to come to it. Uh, so I've, I've built it like this. Two assembly machines here, one making the sticks, one making the cables, and then just a bit of belt weaving here. This is cursed belt weaving, so if you don't know, the way the undergrounds work is this space is considered to be empty, unless you put another underground that matches. So now these are tied up, but like, there's no way to have these be two separate underground networks, unless they're different colours. Not going to handcraft that many iron gear wheels for this demonstration. Unless they're different colours. Now, this is considered to be two completely different sets of belts. This power pole will actually come out here. There it is. Magic. And this is called belt weaving or belt braiding, depending on the part of the world that you're from. And uh, I, I'm not... I, I used to be staunchly anti-belt braiding. I thought it was basically cheating. Um... Which just meant that I personally didn't use it, as I was talking about the biters. You know, like, I don't care how you want to play the game, and no one should care how I want to play the game. I just always self-imposed the limit of not using belt braiding, because I always found it to look weird, be counterintuitive, etc, etc. Uh, and then I did a really large mega base in Crastorio 2. Uh, plug the chat, plug my own video. I did a really large mega base in Crastorio 2 in the lead up to space age and I thought okay I'll use belt weaving for this because I can get a lot more better designs by using belt weaving it's tighter, more compact like corned beef Garth Marenga reference um, and as such I've sort of come around on it it's very helpful for doing little things like this so obviously I want the iron to keep going because I want to be able to build more things here and here and so on And I think actually, in a, in in a way, this looks more smart than if I'd have like done some cursed rerouting of a belt, or like done a splitter here and had this like end here, drag the iron around and then reincorporate it back into the bus here. Could have done it like that, but I think this looks kind of neat. Plus, now we've got four tiers of belts. You can do all kinds of really cursed stuff. Um. So yes, we want medium and large power poles because we want to drag the power network over to this coal because we want to add the coal to the bus as well. Uh, pipes, we're going to need pipes soon for fluid processing. And then I'm also a huge fan of, while you're making pipes, just start making some engines. Just literally bung one assembly machine down 
and just have it make engines. Engines go into... Oh, uh, by the way, if you don't know, you can hold Alt and left-click anything and it will open Factoriopedia for you. Like, literally anything. Big rock. A huge rock entity. 100% fire resistance. Crazy. Tree. Base health, 50. Yields for wood. Anyway. Uh, you need engine units in large quantities later. But in the early game, you only need eight to make one car. You need one per pump. You need five per flamethrowers, but if you're playing with a bar, I didn't even use flamethrowers in my actual default settings playthrough. I don't know if I, I know a lot of people glaze the flamethrowers as being overpowered, but I just don't like rooting the uh, fluid everywhere. I find it to be annoying. I'm also not the kind of person who builds a wall either. I just clear biters from the pollution cloud until there are no more biters in my pollution cloud, and then I call it a day. Um. So I like to just have some engines, because, yeah, so I, I, I want to build a car on short notice, I might uh, want to build some pumps on short notice, and, yeah, maybe eventually also some trains and stuff, just without having to automate this. So I'd like to just do this. It's very slow, 0 0.07 a second, but it's nice to just have some. It also helps you kickstart a few other things, like when you start getting robots, thinking about robots, you can just start plugging a whole bunch of electric in, uh, of engine units into the electric engine unit thing. Uh, yeah, so I made some grenades, cleared this space, because military science is going to live here. Military science is the... oh yeah, and of course, and I the other things that military science needs are bricks, because you need to make walls. Uh, you're going to need stone later, for sure. So if you're going to go to the effort of bringing in stone and smelting it to make bricks, you may as well bring in stone. You can do this in one of two ways. You can just bring in two belts of stone, smelt one, and bring the other through. Or you can do basically the same thing you do here with the steel. You split the stone off, and then you just the excess stone goes through onto the bus. Both are completely fine, of course. Uh, and then some coal. So we've added these three lanes to the bus. Uh, two of which are just basically for military science. You need coal for plastic going forward as well. So um, this was our basic bus. Iron, copper, circuits, steel. This is phase two of your bus, really. Because now we can get military science down. And military science is surprisingly complicated build because you need to um, make piercing rounds from iron, copper and steel. You need to make grenades with iron and coal and you need to make walls from bricks which need stone. So if you look at the total raw ingredients there, the brick doesn't... the brick you can count that brick as stone basically. You need a decent number of different raw resources. <laughs> so military science is really the first proper test of your infrastructure and things. And I, I don't even think that I've done a particularly good job here with this build. Let me plop it in and explain it. Yeah, all things considered, military is quite complicated. When you, especially for this stage in the game. When you look at the sheer number of things you can make with a simple two high bus, you know, belt, sharing the lanes of the belt and stuff. For military it's just odd because you need to make the first tier of um, ammo, turn that into the second tier of ammo. So you need to like output that and to, you know, and share that and then grenades, are iron and I guess it's not that bad, you know, one wall, mach one assembler making walls is more than enough. Grenades are very, very slow, you basically need to run these at a one-to-one -one ratio, and I've done builds in the past where I've sort of done direct insertion of the grenades. But the reason I've done the blueprint like this is because in my default settings playthrough I did roughly the same thing. Uh, the same ratio of build buildings. Um, and then I just stockpiled the walls and the ammo at the ends, 
and use those for fighting biters and, and building basic defences and stuff like that. Sorry, I had to cough really badly. Uh, so I built it like this so that if you are playing with the biters on properly, you can, you know, stockpile these. And you'll also see in the uh, blueprint that I've added uh, constant combinators here just to mark which belts are for which things. It doesn't matter when they're a shared belt, it doesn't matter which is on the top or the bottom for this build. Future builds it may, but I'll try and avoid that where I can. Because your military, you need, once you've got it started, it unlocks a fair bit. But you'll find that your military science usage goes up and down, up and down, up and down. All of the others are, fair, are consistent, like you won't find a recipe that suddenly just doesn't have red science, doesn't have green science. At least not until the really, really long, like the really, really end game stuff. And even then, I was going to say, this health one is really the only one I can think of. I think basically everything after that point just has red science in. Fish breeding doesn't, for some reason. Whereas your military science production will just go up, down, up, down, up, down. So you can stockpile the military science if you want, and just have it being made at a constant rate. But with that, I think you'll find that you'll probably end up having 20,000 military science in a backlog somewhere, and you're just like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this now. You're better off stockpiling these ingredients and using those. And as I say, we will need the grenades. Like, the grenades are helpful for clearing trees and blowing yourself up. It's very easy to blow yourself up now for some reason. I don't know if they've changed the way it works. Uh, I, I would basically wait until you've got stronger explosives too to do this. Levels up the grenade damage another 20% uh, which one-shots the trees. Because currently this is this is just even more annoying than chopping them down, and just as dangerous. And yeah, here's the big lake that I said was uh, going to annoy me. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. I might just have to turn the bus and go. Uh, oh, which way am I going to go? I guess I could go. I guess I could go this way with it. I don't really know. I haven't thought that far ahead. Uh, this is as far ahead as I thought. Because this is the end. This is the end of the episode. We did three different science packs. So next is oil processing. Uh, there's a big... There's some oil here. And there's even more oil there. So we'll get this oil in. We'll do oil processing. We'll get blue science set up. We'll get robots set up. And we may even launch a rocket into space. Not next episode, surely not. Surely not. That sounds like an episode 5 kind of deal to me. I don't know. I'll do my best. I'll do my best, of course. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please let me know. With a like or a comment. And if you want to see more broadcasts from Space Age, be sure to subscribe. Other than that, take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.